Creating a believable world, one in which our players feel like they're actually a part of the events and the action, is the challenge that every GM faces, regardless of what system we're playing in, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons or any other RPG. So how do we do that? Or what are the tools, the keys, what are the elements that contribute to creating a believable world? Well, check it out. I've got someone real special here to help us figure that out today. Welcome to the d and Daily Vlog. As you know, I'm Gregory and this is One in 20 D&D. Now, as we get along with the d and Daily Vlog, I've decided that I really want to get you all exposed to some of my good friends and some of the people that I am learning from so that you might learn as well. Two topics that are at the forefront of creating a world that's believable and has, you know, connections that make us feel like we're in the world are the suspension of disbelief and verisimilitude. And I, I know about these and I understand them a little bit, but I also have a very good friend who knows even more and can explain it in a beautiful and concise way for you all. So I have none other than Aviad Tal, my good friend from the YouTube channel Beyond the Screen. You may also recognize him from our Ice Spire Peak game where he played the enigmatic Zook. And we loved his character and we have become good friends and his videos are incredible if you haven't watched them. Oh my goodness, I learned so much from every single one of his videos. They're beautifully recorded and edited and I definitely want you to go and take a look. I'll have all of his information at the end of this video as well as, of course, in the information down below. Now, without further ado, let me turn this over to Aviat so he can explain a little bit about the suspension of disbelief and verisimilitude. Thank you, Gregory, for having me here. So, what is suspense of disbelief? Suspense of disbelief is something we all know. Everyone understands it, because if you'll go to a theater right now and you'll sit down, the lights will go dark and you'll see a bunch of actors dancing on stage, shouting their lines and whatnot, you won't just stand up and shout, pointing at Hamlet, saying, you're not Hamlet, I know that guy, you're just John, I know you from school. You would do that. Why? But th this is kind of silly, right? Because he isn't really Hamlet. He's John. At that moment, you are willing to suspend your disbelief. You get into this situation. Giving the factors, giving the reality, this is Hamlet. This is what is going on. You are giving a story, giving the circumstances, and you believe them to be real. You take in the story. We all know how to do that. It's the act of giving up your criticism and accepting things for what they are displayed to be. This is something that we use in tabletop RPGs as well. We know that this is not real. This is not the situation we're actually in. I'm not a hero carrying a sword going to slay dragons and you're not a wizard who can cast fireball fireballs do not exist it's not a thing dragons are not real but if they were and this situation had their these characters it would make sense under these rules the rules of this world we are willing to extend our belief and receive in exchange a story an experience. If you know as a DM how to immerse your players in the game, how to help them suspend their disbelief, they will have a better experience at the table. And if you as a player, for example, will know how to do this as well, you'll have more fun, you'll feel you'll, it will be easier for you to get in character and experience the things for what they are. There's a point of skepticism that we need to give up when we get into the game. Sometimes for new players it might be hard to get into the situation around the table because it requires you to be active and react to what's going on. You don't passively consume the media. You need to act on it. 
and that's a difference that is hard for newer players there's no actual representation most of the time so most of it happens in your head and some people are not used to that kind of thinking so be patient with new players and if you are a new player be patient with yourself because you know you keep doing it you keep trying and you will get there you will feel immersed and be able to create wonderful experiences with your friends because this is what it's all about creating fun memories and stories with your friends I, I guess that's all about for me anyway that's that's how I look at it so that's suspense of disbelief as for uh, verisimilitude verisimilitude is um, a term I, I'm sorry if I say it wrong I'm I'm not a native English speaker um, it's the feeling of realness if we're saying that something aids the verisimilitude it means in the simulation of the game we create something that feels realistic for that given reality something that aids in making it feel more cohesive and coherent with itself consequences are a good example you did something in the past and now something comes back because you did something that consequence aids verisimilitude different players different People actually respond differently to descriptions. Some people care more about the depth of personality of NPCs while others would want to see detailed locations. Whatever it is, there are ways to make your players feel more immersed and aid their verisimilitude. So that's, that's everything I had to say on the subject. Thank you very much for having me here, Gregory. Um, back to you! That was awesome, Aviad. I, I have a better understanding of both of these concepts now. And of course, I mean, I love movies. I love video games. I've talked about this in the past. You know, suspension of disbelief is something that is one of the keys to bringing us into an experience and to helping us to enjoy the experience, you know? Like, I know that there really are no Jedi out there, but sure is fun to believe that the Jedi are real. And then when I go and, you know, go to Disney and play around over in their new amusement park, or if I'm playing in our second sunrise game on Wednesday or every other Wednesday night, uh, it's it makes it easier for me to invest myself and to believe in the character and then hopefully make that believable to the other players to the GM and in this case anyone that might be watching so that's awesome and then verisimilitude is is something that I'm really trying to understand and as I delve deeper into world building, some of the tools, techniques, and concepts that Aviad has shared with us here today and that you can find in his amazing videos on his YouTube channel really are helping me understand how to become a better DM. And I am amazed at how much value every one of his videos is packed full of. Aviad shares a wealth of information in every one of his videos. He's an incredible creator and I cannot recommend his content enough. Go check him out here on YouTube and stay tuned for more. Maybe you'll get to see Zook out again running around with a loom in the near future. Who knows what the future will hold. I know you will enjoy this video right here. Do take a look at that next. I will see you at a table someday. Keep rolling 20s until then and remember, it's your game. Play your way.